Hi, this is Ravi Rose, founder of Iru. Super excited to be here with Lauren, who is a realtor in Georgia, and she's also RCSD um, certified. And what we're going to be talking about today is documentation. If you are uh, own, owning a home, you're in the process of getting divorced, or you're thinking about getting divorced, there's certain amount types of documentation that you have to start gathering together. And these are the types of documentations that they request um, out there in Georgia. So Lauren is going to go through, uh, you know, some ideas and things like that. You could write some notes. But at the end, I'm also going to present you and let you know how you can get in touch with Lauren um, so that you can get more information. So remember, this is general information and to have a deeper dive into your particular situation, which may differ from what Lauren is mentioning right now. I will explain to you how to be in touch with her. So Lauren, thank you for being here. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, one of the things that um, people that are preparing for divorce or thinking about divorce or they're just starting into the process, it can be overwhelming. You know, there is so much going through their minds, so, so much emotion. Um, it's hard to kind of step back and decide exactly what it is that you're needing to do. Um, a lot of people will get online and start to research the basics. What do I need to do? So there's there's a lot of good information out there generally about divorce, but a lot of times people forget about their real property. And real property is going to be your home. It's going to be potentially land. It could be a business building. It could be a vacation home. And in somebody's mind, they're going to be thinking, yeah, we want to sell the house or we need to sell the house. Or in the case of uh, couples that have children, uh, one of the spouses might decide, well, we, we've got to stay in the house. We've got to keep things that are, that are familiar for the kids and we don't want a lot of change. So in their mind, they're like, well, let's decide how much does the house cost? How much could we sell it for? What at the end of the day, could we get at settlement for? But they forget there's so much more involved with the home. So some of the things that I do when I'm talking to people looking into, into divorce, I try to tell them up front, look, it's really important that you pull together as much as you can documents related to the house. And it's things like homeowner's insurance. It's the house condition. What is the condition of the home? It's the house appraisal, which oftentimes people are like, oh yeah, well, we thought about getting an appraisal anyway to help us decide the price of the house. It's where's your the mortgage and anything else that's related such as like a HELOC, right? So those are the really top five things that are really important to gather related to the house. And as you start to gather those things, it helps remove a lot of that emotion that you're dealing with. And, you know, when you're so stressed out already, this helps the home become more objective and less emotional and less stressful. Plus, you're able to really do some due diligence and have something to bring to the table to help you make an informed decision. Because at the end of the day, House appraisal does not equal house equity. So people kind of forget that there's so much more involved with the home versus just the bottom line of what we can get out of it, or even to help decide somebody if they need to sell it. Like oftentimes, a lot of the times you can't stay in the house, no matter if you think it's important for the children to stay in the house or not. So this helps all of this information that you're gathering and looking at who's on the homeowner's insurance policy. You know, what does the mortgage look like? What is left? Can the spouse, one of the spouses, the out spouse, as we call it, when it is related to divorcing or marital property, can the out spouse, um, can the marital spouse, in-house spouse be able to pay the out house uh, spouse? Are they going to be able to walk away um, with, with some equity? And oftentimes what um, the person who wants to keep the house, the parent who wants to keep the house, are they qualified to keep the house? 
there's a lot of assumptions that are made there as well. So it's really important that you're making a list of what's related to the house. Who has your mortgage? Do you have a lender that you're comfortable talking to? Like you could call the mortgage company and talk to them who currently has your mortgage. Oftentimes I recommend people call a lender or somebody that they have um, been referred to or somebody that they know that they're comfortable speaking with and being able to share all the information who's not a, who needs to be able to look at everything to help that person decide or that couple decide, can they afford to keep the house or do they have to sell the house? Um, with the homeowner's insurance, um, making sure that both the spouses are on the homeowner's insurance. If not, then the outhouse person, the spouse that's going to be coming off the policy, they need to be removed and the person is going to stay in the house. Their name needs to stay on the house. So there's, there's so many different things that need to be looked at that a lot of times attorneys and mediators aren't even aware of. And, you know, it's, it's just a quick and easy list that you can start to make. You can present it to um, the attorney to talk about the items. But again, oftentimes that attorney or mediator may not know everything that's involved in, in getting that information together. So the other thing is um, house condition. That's a lot of times not even thought about. So again, if there is a spouse that's gonna be staying in the house, um, they're going to have to be maintaining the house. So is everything in working order? Like before settlement is, has been come to a decision, is that house spouse going to be getting any additional funds to repair something? Um, are they going to be able to have what they need in order to continue with, with that mortgage, you know, anything that's related to maybe a big fix that needs to be done. So those are some of the things that I highly recommend that people look at because there are, there's been some interesting stories about later on down the road when the house spouse decides to sell the house and there is an existing condition that really should have been um, taken care of at the time of settlement and paid for, now they're trying to sell a house and it's harder to sell it because there's an existing condition that never got addressed. So again, it's just a quick list that I recommend people put together. Again, it's mortgage. What does your mortgage look like? Can you afford the house? Are you gonna be able to pay, um, provide equity to the spouse that's no longer gonna be living in the house? You're gonna be looking at homeowner's insurance. Who's on the insurance? Who needs to be on the insurance? You need to look at house condition. Do you need an inspection? Have somebody come in, check for anything that might need to be repaired. You're looking at house appraisal. Are you looking at just a report that a realtor has provided saying this is the value of your house? Or are you actually getting a professional documentation from an appraiser that's telling you what's the true value of your home? Yeah. And also the... The thing is the HELOC, if there's any kind of um, loan or second mortgage that's associated that needs to be closed. So I think there's a lot of different aspects of, of um, you know, when you're divorcing, a lot of aspects to think about. There's a big difference between working with a realtor and working with a uh, attorney or mediator who may not be, um, you know, as detailed as someone like Lauren, who has the experience and the training and all that in sort of looking at the entire picture of your uh, selling and buying of homes. So if you want to reach out to uh, Lauren and get more information, especially in Georgia, um, and you're specifically, you've got some questions, you're not sure what to do, how to do it, what documentation to get together, please uh, look out for all her information below. Uh, reach out to her directly, have a private conversation, and make sure that you're preparing yourself for um, you know, a successful divorce experience here. So I thank you, Lauren, for being here with us. Until the next time we speak, I wish you all a day that matters. Take care.